Pam, the Ukrainian Air Force tonight is falling just short of claiming official responsibility for yet another drone strike deep inside Russian territory, but they're certainly not denying it either. A spokesperson for the Air Force, saying, Air Force saying, quote, this is just a consequence of what Russia is doing, which is the relentless bombardment of civilian infrastructure targets that cause rolling blackouts affecting millions of people across this country in the dead of winter. Now, as far as this latest drone strike uh, in the western port city of Engels, which is along the Volga River, around 500 miles southeast of Moscow, we know that at least three Russian servicemen were killed on Monday. And we also know this is the second attempted drone attack on this area, which includes a strategic bomber airbase. Uh, now, Russian state media is claiming that this drone was shot down. We cannot independently verify that claim. Meanwhile, in Moscow, uh, President Putin is, well, he's certainly getting a lot of skepticism, not just here in Ukraine, but around the world for his offer that is believed here in Ukraine to be disingenuous, uh, to negotiate to an end to this war. Uh, talk about acceptable solutions, in his words. Uh, a advisor to President Zelensky says that Moscow um, doesn't really want to negotiate. They just want to avoid responsibility for their continuing attacks on civilians that Ukraine says warrants them being kicked out of the United Nations uh, and the United Nations Security Council, where they're a permanent member with veto power, one of five. Uh, there's actually no mechanism written into the UN Charter to remove them, so that is more of a political statement than an actual actual possibility at this stage, uh, although the Ukrainians would certainly like to see some consequences at the UN for Russia because essentially they have the power to veto any resolutions against them. Meanwhile, here in Kyiv, President Zelensky uh, calling for patience and faith from the Ukrainian people and warning that there could be some difficult and dark days ahead. When he gave his Christmas address, uh, he warned of the potential of Russian retaliation. Uh, of course, he didn't mention the drone strike, but in general, the Ukrainians uh, are worried that there could be some sort of major Russian attack before the end end of the year after a brief pause over Christmas. And uh, Dmitry Medvedev, the former president of Ukraine, uh, he is saying that Russia will engage in this war until, quote, the disgusting, almost fascist regime in Kyiv is both removed and demilitarized, which certainly is very different language from President Putin saying he's willing to negotiate, Pam. All right. Well, Ripley, thank you so much. And more perspective now from CNN military analyst and retired Army Lieutenant General Mark Hartling. General Hartling, you heard that report there from Will Ripley. What is your reaction to this new strike on an air base deep inside Russian territory? Let's call it what it is, Pam. Engels 2 Air Base uh, near the city of Sakura, about 400 kilometers away from the front line, has several important factors regarding it's, this has been an effective operational target now twice for the Ukrainian uh, uh, military, and it's important for about four reasons. First, it shows Russia they have no safe haven, and they must defend their facilities wherever they are. Secondly, it shows Ukraine has a strike capability that Russia didn't know about. Third, and most importantly, Engels 2 is the base for the Tu-160 aircraft. That's something called the backfire bomber, and that airplane has a standoff capability and the and the, it's able to launch multiple cruise missiles. These are the missiles that have been launched from outside the territory of Ukraine to affect the, the infrastructure within Ukraine. And that's why Ukraine is targeting. But finally, the most important part, there was reports tonight that these aircraft have now been moved further to the east in Russia, 4,000 miles away from the, from the Ukrainian border. That's three time zones. And if so, it will require Russia to launch those aircraft use a lot more fuel and be able to be picked up. So it's they're all critically important. So that is the practical military effect. Meantime, you have Vladimir Putin saying on Sunday that he is ready to, quote, negotiate with everyone involved in this process about acceptable solutions, end quote, with regard to the war in Ukraine. You have actually, uh, what should we say, quote, negotiated with Russians. What did that experience tell you about Putin's intentions here? Yeah, well, I certainly haven't negotiated with Mr. Putin himself, but I have uh, negotiated with some of his military officers, his generals, and some of his Ministry of Defense officials. And what I will tell you is this. I learned valuable lessons, Pamela. First of all, they lie. Secondly, they will never negotiate evenly. And thirdly, if they do finally negotiate and you think you have a deal, they will renege on that deal. And what's important about this, all of our European allies know this. And it seems the Americans are slow to learn this, that it's just not a good thing to negotiate with Putin because he lies, he detracts, and he reneges on any deal that he makes. Ukraine, as, we, as Will pointed out, is calling for Russia to be excluded from the UN. What do you make of that? 
Yeah, I, I'm not going to comment on that, Pam, because that's something for the politicians to decide. But I, I've also seen reports from from CNN reporters saying that's going to be very difficult to do because uh, the Soviet Union, not Russia, the Soviet Union was one of the founding members of the UN. And because of that was one of the five original members that makes up that body. It's going to be tough to kick them off because they have a veto vote. Uh, they can just veto anybody that tries to kick them off that Security Council. 